This is the FW32 module. It's a built-in wireless receiver operating on the 900 megahertz band. It also has built-in LiPo batteries offering ample power supply. Here you can see the power switch located to the left of the antenna. Never power the module on without first having the antenna attached to the top of the FW32. Here we see two connections. The top one is the CN36 connection, which you use to attach to any CN36 slat, such as the Renegade, Starfire, or F1. Here I've got it attached to our Renegade 32Q slat. So in this picture, you would simply attach one of the leads of the EMAT to the common and the other to the actual desired queue. The smaller connection is used to either charge the FW32 or during use, you attach the arming key, which allows you to arm the FW32 prior to firing. This photo shows what the arming key would look like when it's actually attached to the FW32. Now let's take a look at the Mongoose transmitter and its settings so that you can properly use the FW32. To power on the menu, push and hold the green button for four seconds. You'll see the very first one is the module count. This indicates how many modules are in the field. Next is the LCD off delay. Here you can change your passcode. Don't forget it. The charge mode is not used. The final selection is the dead man option. This allows you to select either INC, which stands for incremental, or step. Or you can go the opposite direction and use the dead man as the actual dead man switch which will arm or disarm your module. This video will show you what the step mode does. Every time I press the button, a cue will fire in sequence. Assuming the module is armed, and the arming key is inserted. If you wanted to bypass the trigger, you simply press INC on the mongoose and it will continue. You can also just push a button that's lit and it'll fire that cue. This mode allows you to arm and disarm the module using the trigger. By releasing the trigger, you disarm the module. So in this demo, I have not yet inserted the safety key. I press the module button, select one, which is the correct address, and it detects the module, showing it is disarmed. I can now press SEQ, standing for sequence, and now you have a full range of possible sequences. I have now inserted the safety key. We've already found the module, so I can just hit the sequence button. Every time I press the trigger, you arm the module. You'll notice that little green light came on, indicating it's armed, and the safety key is installed. Now I'm going to press the one, which is where that sequence is stored. I push the button and you'll notice the sequence starts. The sequence simply runs one through 32. Every time I release the trigger, it disarms. Hitting the trigger, it rearms. At the bottom right of the FW32, you'll see the RS-45 connection. To insert wires, you simply push down on these yellow plungers, then release once the wire is inserted. 
A is the positive RS-45 or red wire, and B is the negative RS-45 or black wire. This one FW32 is connected to the PC. Ion Basic is running. I scan the network. That single module shows up, and you can alter it if necessary. This video, we have two FW32s, one wired, one wireless. Again, I scan the network. It finds both using Ion Basic, and you can change addresses on either one. You can use Ion Basic to change addresses. You'll use Ion Finale Fire to actually upload scripts.